I want to show you how to do the third crossover. It's called the pull crossover. This, this crossover works when the defender is on your hip, okay? And then you're gonna pull to the side, creating space, and then you're gonna cross over to the left, all right? Watch this. Pull, cross. See that, how it creates space? Watch again. Pull, cross. That's the pull cross on my hip. Right, so you be going me on my hip, and my whole point of this is to pull you this way, and then I'm gonna cross the ball over. So you're trying to get me to read and react and get away from you. Exactly. You're trying to get away from me. I'm trying to get away from you, and then come back this way. So I'm pulling you out this way, and I'm going across. Okay. So take the ball away. Yeah. Show it to me, just legs. In front of the camera. Okay. So what's going on with his legs? I want you to watch. So I pull and yeah. then I cross. Okay, show me again. So pull, cross. Okay. So what he's and this is a very long movement, yes. Yes it is. One of the longer ones. The wider you the, the longer you can get it, the better. Especially the taller the opponent, the more you're really gonna have to pull them because tall people don't need to be pulled, right? Right. They so just stand place. Yeah. Exactly. So you need to really pull them. So the longer the movement, the, the more effective it will be. Right. Okay, so what's, show me the ending of this movement. So he's got a, he's got a pull one so way. So I pull, and then I cross it over. Okay. So he needs to produce power, basically, again, this quick coupling, this, this turnaround time he's doing. He's got to produce it as fast as possible from here to there. Right? Yes, and, and on this one, on this crossover, there can be a slight pause right here where you're waiting for that defender to move. Perfect. Right? Because if they don't move, then you're going to keep continue going through. What happens? See how his... Okay, do this again. See how his back foot slides back a little bit? The reason why it's sliding back from a biomechanics standpoint is because if he was... on this way. If he slid this way and his foot came directly forward, he's not very loaded. Okay? So in the front, he's actually in a worse position because if he had to cross, I could just get into him. Via him, okay, so set it up. Via him slightly stepping backwards with this leg, he's actually literally pulling me into a committed change of direction. I'm committing myself as the as the defender to be pulled in one direction, not only sideways, which is you know what he's originally thinking. He's actually via that back foot stepping back in relation to this one. He's pulling me this way. So he's got lateral change of direction as well as forward change of direction for me and backward change of direction for him. But if I was to turn him sideways, okay, so try this again sideways, and pause. If you look at the hip mechanics, his knee bend, okay, is not that large, same position. So his knee bend is not that much. His hip bend is a lot more. So my point is, he's actually loading his hip to change direction. He's not loading the knee. He's loading his hip. So the, the exercise that I would choose is what we call a hockey jump. Okay? And so a hockey jump, the idea behind a hockey jump is I'm going to be going from this direction to that direction to this direction. So skating, right? Now within a hockey jump, you've got three major factors. You have proper loading of the hip, which I just explained. Coupling time, so how fast I'm going from one direction to the next direction. And then the decision of what I'm going to do once I've landed the other direction. Because every time you've shown the puck, go again, show it again. Okay, so show it from this way, forward. That's powerful, this is powerful back, and then he's got a soft step. So somewhere in here, you have a soft step, yeah. right? Yeah. Whether that's to run forward, you have to make another decision once he's finished. What I'm gonna do with it. What you're gonna do with it. But at first, I need to be able to produce power, change direction. So, hockey jump. The way that I would, I would start with this drill, and then further you need to experiment with it, is in a hockey jump, I would start with one leg, jump to the other, pause. Work on speed, change direction. How much I'm actually loading, not necessarily down, but how much I'm loading my hip to fire back. I'm loading my hip. Now the other thing about this, and the reason why I chose the hockey jump, is because generally when I hockey jump, this foot goes backwards naturally to load. Right? If I'm skating, I'm skating with my other foot traveling backwards. So I'm gonna. Okay. Shoot. 
show me that hockey jump. Where you're going to start over here on one side, I want you to cross and back. So, right. And how far can you jump sideways? Okay. So, looking at David, he actually has a weakness in being able to produce enough power through his head. So my point is, is that when he gets out here, this change of direction wasn't any faster than his change of direction and decision to go this way. This was a certain speed, and the cross was a certain speed. What I need him to do, and what the hockey jump is going to do, is, okay, flow, go, flow, go. I got a question for you then. Yeah. Would it be better if I maybe then started automatically jumping slower from this side to understand that this side needs to go faster? No. You only think about the side that you're going to be pivoting or changing direction off of. So if he's going to be changing direction off of his right foot, the only thing I care about is the outside glute and hip loading that's going to get me to move. That's the only thing I'm going to do. So how fast can you get back here? Okay. That's what I'm talking about, is there's the same speed over and over again. So let's work on this. And this, yeah, this is because repetition. <laughs> how much can you, how, uh, when you get here, it's that ah, to change direction. How fast can you turn that around? Okay, see how short, when he tries to go quick, he goes shorter. Can he, over, over. <clears throat> because you told me, the longer the pull, the better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So try a long and the other way. Long hockey jump. How much power can you produce off that right leg? Yes. Pauses. Boom. Go. Pauses. Boom. Pauses. Okay. Now try the other side. There we go. There we go. So now that timing started picking up. That speed started picking up. So he had a chance which he's always going to in the, in the pump crossover, or the pull crossover, he's going to have that chance to think about the movements he's going to create. And it may be a quick decision, but you have a second here to think about producing power and changing direction. Mm -hmm. So I want him to pause every time he gets here. Okay. So take a pause. Let's do five reps. You're going to pause every time you end up back on this left leg. Longer. Go. There you go. Okay, the right word for it is hot coals. Hot coals. Don't touch lap. Don't touch hot coals. What's the least amount of time I can still hip load and not spend any time on this foot? That's a quick couple. Try it both directions. Your foot should end up backwards and I should load. I would pause. Then you can work on multiples. Okay? So, speeding it up, taking pauses every fifth one because I'm going to end up on a different one. So let's try that. Every fifth, he's going to pause. So every fifth jump, pause. Every fifth step, yeah. One, two, three, four, pause. Go. One, quick, two, three, four. One, long, two, three, four, pause. There you go. How much power do you have to produce to get over there quickly? Right? Yeah. Okay. So, now I'm going to look at what's happening in his core midsection. So I'm going to get back to the ball because he's feeling lonely. All right, show me what's going on with the ball. Like where is the placement when I'm starting here? Where is that placement? Towards the ball? Yeah. So it would be like right about him? Okay, before it went that direction, before you chose to go that direction. Before it chose to go that direction, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so just following it there. Yeah. He's within his shoulders. This makes sense. If I put up walls here, the ball and his core is within the space of his shoulders. Okay, where are you going to? I'm going up this way. Right, so show it to me. Right, and then where are you going? Right. Right, okay. So he has changed direction in the core, but for the most part, when he produces power, he's in a very tight position. Yeah, that's and that's why, that's why the, the, the jumps are short for me. Yeah. Right? Because I'm used to maintaining a very small frame. Yeah, a tight, a yeah. tight, tight position. But, the wider you can get, the better it is. Right. So the improvement, as far as the leg piece goes, is working on your hockey jump and trusting that that length and quick turnaround power is there for you. As far as what's going on in the core, I'm trying to prove the strength, endurance, and ability to keep producing it 
uh, about this being tight in his frame, that's the core exercise I want him to work on. So, tie rotations. Pick this up from a man, Nick Tuminello. Tie rotations. Where everybody goes wrong is they do this. Hey, Macarena. Okay? That's where, that's where this guy does it wrong all the time. So, my point is that I need to be tight as if my shoulders were changing direction. My knees, my hips, everything from my knees up should be allowed to have some body movement. I'm within this tight space the whole time. The other thing about that, show me the pull. He's pretty tall the whole time. He's not getting down and loading quite so much. He's pretty tall, so he has to produce change of direction in a very high position. So not to say that you couldn't do tight rotations lower and you will feel more power, but your tight rotation should be about chest height and maybe a quarter squat. So from here again, Get going slow with your shoulders if this was glued to my chest. Try reps of 50 to 100. I'm going to give this to David. I'm going to give him, I'm just going to face him here. I'm going to give him a space that he's going to smash off the wall. You want to stay standing? Yeah. He's staying standing. So I'm going to be here and he's just going to go changing his shoulders and how fast can he go? Ah, go, shoulders, shoulders. There you go, go. All right, do the, do the pull for me. There's so much power coming off of it. All right, so let's torch this guy. Now what I'm gonna be looking for, and most important, is you're gonna see, because he's got big shoulders, he's gonna, you're gonna see the back of his shoulder and the front end. Because I want everything. Remember, the knees and the hips can move a little bit, but he needs to feel planted. So if you're watching this on the video, you're going to be seeing how much is coming from the midsection and how tight that turning is. When it goes wrong, and it is going to go wrong because he's going to get tired, he's going to take the ball and do this, and you're not going to see his shoulder girdle and core twisted. So I'm going to give him 100 to do, and I want to see if he can have this back play because that core is rotating nice and tight. Let's go. <laughs> I feel it. Alright, there we go. Thanks, Scott.